What's happening in stream mode? Is that right? Yes, that is right. Right. So this is where she starts talking about what happened at the La Biancas, right? Right. They're saying August 3rd at the residence owned by Mr. Polanski. Did you, you have anything to do with any of those homicides? And she says, no, of course, because she wasn't actually no drive. Did you have any idea they were going to take place? And she says, no. Did you participate in any way in planning or carrying out, assuming there was a plan? No. Those homicides? No. So she's just sitting there going, no, no, no. Now on the next night, this would be August 9th. Did you, you along with Katie Krenwinkel, get in an automobile and go someplace? Yes. Now, before you got into that auto um, automobile, incidentally, was it a 1955 Ford or an old model Ford? It is the yellow one that was in the pictures in the case. All right. Before you got into the automobile with Katie, just before, did you know anything about the homicides that had been committed the night before? I watched them on the TV that afternoon. Did you know the identities of any of the perpetrators when you watched the news on TV? I don't know what a perpetrator is. The people that did the killing. No. Now, before getting in that automobile, did you hear Charles Manson or Tex Watson discuss the doing of other killings? I didn't hear anybody discuss the doing of other killings. When you got in the automobile with Patricia Tramwinkle, did you have any knowledge or idea or suspicion that there had been additional murders planned that evening? No. Did you get in that automobile with a change of clothing? No. Did anybody tell you to take a change of clothing? No. Had you taken acid sometime before you got in the vehicle? Yes, after Bobby was arrested, I was taking quite a bit of acid. Do you remember whether or not you had taken acid that particular day? Don't guess. If you don't remember, say so. I have looked back upon it a lot, and I believe that I did. It was either in the bunkhouse or the kitchen. I asked Patricia to go to the stash and get some acid. And Patricia is also Katie. She switches her name there. So your best recollection is that you probably did take acid before you got in this automobile. Yes. Did you bring any weapon with you of any kind when you got into the car? No. Incidentally, who was in the car when you got in it and it started off down the road? Linda, Tex, Clem, Sadie, Patricia and me. Was Mr. Manson there? No, he was with Stephanie. Right, so she's denying that Manson was in the car, right? And everyone knows that Manson went to the La Biancas. If you studied this case, Manson went to the La Biancas, went in, tied them up, told them they wouldn't be harmed, then left and let the others in. Right, but she's denying that Manson was even in the car at her first trial. Was Mr. Manson there? No, he was with Stephanie. How do you know he was with Stephanie Scram? Because he spent all his time with Stephanie when Stephanie was around. Was Stephanie something of a newcomer to the family or the group or whatever you want to call it? Yes, a very pretty young girl. Had she been a long time or was she a recent arrival? No, she was new. Sorry, went too fast. When she came, she had a big crush on Charlie and demanded all his attention. Did Stephanie's crush on Charlie create any competition or jealousy among the other girls, to your knowledge? Not with me. If it did with somebody else, I don't know. Now, getting back to the automobile ride, did you see any of the other people in the group with weapons? She pauses. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I know what you're talking about. I'm trying to think. I don't recall seeing any, but then again, a lot of us wore knives, you know. There could have been somebody in the car with a knife on. When you say that a lot of people wore knives, was that the per what was the purpose in your wearing knives from time to time? Different things. I know a lot of times I wore a knife for protection, because when I had been in Haight-Ashbury, I had been attacked many times. I did it because of fear. And also, when I'd go on the runs with vegetables, I'd use it to clean off the food. To the best of your recollection, however, on this occasion, did you not have did you did not have a knife? No. And then the, it gets hard to read. Now, did any of the people in the automobile tell you where they were going, or why, why, or what they were doing? We never explained ourselves to each other at the ranch. To you, this was just another automobile trip that you took on occasion. Sure. Was this a fairly frequent occurrence at the ranch? You would all pile into the car and go someplace. Now and then, you know, if a group of people felt like driving, just going down the down into the monster, which had been in the city, and drive for a while and look at all the different lights and see what people were doing and what fast pace to what's the, the, the it gets really hard to read here. They were coming out until it started twirling our hands in circles, and then we would go back to the ranch. 
Well, yeah, so she said, what the hell? Just for a cruise, maybe we would go down in the dream, you know, go get an ice cream cone, different little things. Did it give you some sort of sense of satisfaction to drive through the monster and to see how all the other people were living and comparing their satisfaction? What do you mean satisfaction? All right. Just a feeling of not superiority, perhaps a feeling of relief to realise that you didn't have to live this way. All these people were living in the monster. No, because as long as it existed, it would be part of me. Do you have any recollection as to how long you drove around on this particular evening? No. Did Linda do all the driving? She was the only one with the driver's licence. Did you know how to drive at that time? Sure. Was it somewhat of a rule that only people that drove were ones with driver's licences? It wasn't a rule, it was just, you know, a policy maybe? No, but it's just a simple fact that if you drive without a driver's licence, you will get stopped and go to jail. And if somebody in the car has got a driver's licence, then they should drive. Did anybody else drive that evening besides Linda? Not that I know of. Do you remember where you went? No, we went all over the place. Were there any discussions or conversations that you can remember during your trip all over the place? No. As far as you were concerned, was it just a sort of jaunt through the big city for no particular purpose, just to drive? Did anybody give anybody else directions? In other words, did Tex or Clem? Not that I remember. Mr Keith, that was over a year ago. I am not going to play like I remember something that I don't remember. I don't want you to do that. I don't remember any conversations at all. Just to the best of your recollection, did you stop at any place along the way that you can remember? All I remember is that we drove and we drove and we drove and we stopped at a house. And that was the only stop you made you can remember. You know, we might have stopped at a gas station. We might have stopped at a place to get a pack of cigarettes. I don't remember. Could you describe generally the place where you finally did stop? No. <laughs> was it a residential neighbourhood or commercial? Yes, it was a residential neighbourhood. One I hadn't seen. I wasn't familiar with it. <laughs> when they actually lived in the black... No, I don't think... Was she with them when they had the black bus? Probably not. But the black bus was actually parked next door to this house. I don't think she was with them when that happened, though. So maybe she wasn't familiar with it. Did you ask some questions of Linda as to why you stopped at this particular area? No, I never asked anybody why. Did anybody ask Linda any questions about why, why are we stopped? No. Did anybody tell Linda to stop at this particular area? Not that I know of. What happened after you stopped? Linda and Tex got out of the car. Do you remember whether or not one of them or both of the rest of you in the car, uh, why they were getting out? No. They did not say anything to the best of your recollection. They might have. Like I say, I don't remember. So she don't remember a lot, does she? What did you say Linda and Tex did, if anything, after they got out of the car? They walked away from the car. Did they go towards the house or down the sidewalk or what? I'm not even sure what direction they went in. At some time later, did one or both of them reappear at the car? Linda came back and she said that Tex was going to stay. So Patricia and I said, well, we want to stay too. So we went up to the house. She said, go up that driveway. And we're about to get into what happened within the house. Did Linda tell you what was going on in the house? No. Did she tell you anything at all about who was in the house or what they were doing? No. Did you ask? No. I can, tell, I can tell you what I figured, but I didn't ask. Well, at that time, were you? At that time, at, at that time, you strike that. Right. The, the, the lawyer has to rephrase his question, right? You did walk up the driveway with Katie and go in the house. Yes. While you walked up the driveway towards the house, did you have murder in your mind? No. Or harming anybody? No. Or robbing anybody? No. Or burglarising the house? No. When you entered the house, did you just walk right in, you and Katie? Yeah, the door was ajar, so we walked in. Did it appear to be the front door? It most definitely was the front door. When you got inside the house, what did you see? Tex standing, a woman sitting and a man sitting. Did you notice anything unusual about the man? His hands were behind him like this. So I'm guessing she goes like that. Yeah. Did you notice whether they were tied or not? I don't remember if I saw the strings or not, but it was apparent that they were. Was anybody saying anything? But she knew they were tied with strings as well, which is, yeah, yeah, she didn't see anything. How did she know that? Was anybody saying anything? No, we all just looked at each other for a few minutes, a few seconds. Did Tex say, huh? 
Excuse me for interrupting you. That's okay. No, it's not okay. I'm sorry. Did Tex say anything when you walked in the house? No. Did either of the two people on the couches say anything? The woman looked at us and she said, we will give you anything. Had you said anything, either you or Katie? No. Just out of the clear blue sky, the woman said, I'll give you anything. Yes. Did you hear Tex threaten the woman or the man? No. Did you or Katie threaten the woman or the man? No. So the first thing that you can remember that was said was, I'll give you anything. Yes. Then what happened? So Patricia and myself and the lady went into the bedroom and the closet door was open. So we were looking at the clothes. <coughs> Excuse me. And then she said, I won't call the police. I won't call the police. She kept saying that. Now, wait a minute. Let's go slowly. Did the woman show you her clothes? Well, the closet was open and all of the clothes were there. Did she have a lot of clothes? Yes, she had some very pretty clothes. Did you think the woman was going to give you some of the clothes? Yes. Why did you think that? Because she said, I'll give you anything. All right. Did the woman appear to you at that time when she said, I'll give you anything to be panicky or afraid? Well, if she felt at all what I felt, sure she did, because I wasn't even sure what was happening. Were you afraid? I don't know if afraid is the right word. I was uneasy. Yeah, there was, you know, that feeling that you get. Well, I think I know the feeling that you get, but I cannot put it into words at the present time. At any rate, I take it everything did not seem quite right to you. No. Something seemed wrong. Yes. So that you and Katie were looking at her clothes. Yes, and she was standing behind us. And then did, while you were looking at her clothes, did something happen with respect to a table lamp? Yes, she picked up a great big table lamp and she picked it up and it looked like she was going to throw it. And I looked through the corner of my eye and I saw the lamp coming down, so I blocked it. What happened to the lamp? I got it away from her and we fought for a few seconds and I got her on the bed and I ripped the pillowcase off the pillow and I put it on her head. And I don't know if I used the lamp cord to tie around her neck or her hands or if I even used it. Now, while you were struggling with the woman, did Katie go someplace and then come back to your knowledge? Yeah, Katie came back in the bedroom and she had a whole bunch of kitchen utensils. Were there any knives amongst the kitchen utensils? Yes. Did you manage to quiet the woman down? I kept saying, please be still. And then she, at that time, had you threatened to hurt or harm her in any way? No response. Obviously, you had been fighting with her, but did you... We were struggling. Did you have any words with her while you were struggling? I don't recall words. Or did Katie have any words? I don't recall Katie speaking to her. At some time while you were struggling, did the woman start yelling for somebody? For somebody? Yeah. She just kept saying, I won't call the police. And it seemed the more she said police, the more panicky I got. That is what I meant to get at. Whilst you were struggling with her and she said, I won't call the police. Yes. Did she say that in a loud screaming tone or how would you describe it? I don't know how loud it was. You know, it could have been loud enough for everyone to hear. And then again, it might not have been. I don't know how loud it was, even though she was stood right there. Incidentally, had you heard anything unusual going on in the living room or some other part of the house while you and Katie were with Mrs. Labianca? It's hard for me to say anything like that because at the time I was, you know, wrestling with a woman. I don't know what was going on anywhere, but what I was doing, and as far as sounds or things being said, all I remember is that the police, police. I don't remember, you know, like if somebody said something else, I don't remember. I see. Now, when you heard Mrs. Labianca talk about not calling the police, did that give you some reaction or, or do something to your mind or make you afraid? Yes. And what did it do? It's difficult to describe, but what I have seen, but what I have seen the police do... They instill a very big paranoia fear inside of me. And the more she would name it, the more I would be frightened that she would and they would come. And what did you do, if anything, by reason of this paranoia or fear, as you put it? I asked her to lay still and then I picked up the lampshade again and I took one of the knives and Patricia had a knife and we started stabbing and cutting up the lady. So, yeah, you see, she she totally admits she started stabbing whilst the lady was alive. Up to that time, did you have any intention of hurting anybody? No. Mrs. Labianca in particular? No. Did you stab Mrs. Labianca as well as Patricia 
as well as Patricia? Or did Patricia do the stabbing while you just held her? I stabbed her. I don't know if it was before or after she was dead, but I stabbed her. So she then says she doesn't know if it was before or after she was dead. But her initial statement is that she started stabbing her when Patricia started stabbing her. So while she was still alive. Did you stab her sometimes after she appeared to be dead, Les? I don't know if she was dead. She was laying there on the floor. Had you stabbed her at all before you saw her laying on the floor? I don't remember. Is it all kind of a nightmare to you now? Not a nightmare. It just isn't clear. It all happened so, you know, I cannot describe it. After it was all over, did you and Katie go in the next room or back into the living room, should I say? Mr. Keith, all I know is what I have done. I don't remember what room I walked in next. Well, tell us what happened next then. Then I got a towel and I started wiping everything off. I just got obsessed with the thought of fingerprints because, you know, in the movies and things, when things happen, you always get a towel and wipe off fingerprints. And Patricia came in and I was inside drawers wiping off things that had never even been touched. I was wiping off. That was all I was going to. That was all I was doing. Going through everything, fingerprinting, you know, wiping everything off. And she came and she took the towel and I'm not sure what I did. I just have a flash of me. You know, I just have pictures of me. I was standing in the hallway and I went into the living room afterwards and I saw a man laying there and I saw writings on the wall and then we left. Now let's back up a minute. Did you see Mr. Labianka lying in the living room? Yes. Was Tex in the living room when you saw Mr. Labianka? I don't know where Tex was. I know he left the house with us, but from the moment we got in the bedroom until we left the house, I don't even know where Tex was. Did it surprise you to see Mr. Labianka, apparently dead too, in the living room? having been stabbed to death? No. <laughs> Why didn't it surprise you? Did you have any pre-knowledge or foreknowledge that he was going to get killed? No. But when you have lived with a group of people and your thought becomes so complete, when one thing would go on in the bedroom or in the house, it would just happen automatically in the next one. It didn't surprise me at all. It was like we were all running on the same thought. She's describing folly edger psychosis. I'll explain what that is in a minute. They've told her how to describe it. And even if this thought, we were going back to the original thought about Bobby, it could have been. I never thought about it to weave the places together. Were you thinking about trying to save or aid in some manner Bobby Beausoleil when you were stabbing Mrs. Labianka when she was on the floor? I wasn't thinking anything like I was stabbing Mrs. Labianka. Yeah, I wasn't thinking anything while I was stabbing Mrs. Labianka. Now, before you left the house, Les, did you have anything to eat? No. And she's lying there because they did. They stayed for ages and they ate watermelon and all that in the kitchen. Did any of the others, to your recollection or knowledge, not that I know of, you didn't have a change of clothing, did you? No, we did not take a change of clothing. So I take it nobody changed their clothing after this happened. Not that I know of. Did you catch a ride somewhere? Yes, we hitchhiked back to Spahn. The three of you together. Yes. Did you talk to Tex at all or did he talk to you about what he was supposed to be doing in that in that house? Why he did what he did? None of us talked about it much. Tex kind of was somewhere else, you might say. Do you believe, having ingested all the LSD and other drugs that you have taken, that Tex was under the influence of some narcotics or hallucinogen? I would say he was. Do you know what particular drug he took? No, but I had heard Sadie mention something about STP. What is STP? I don't think I've ever had any, but I heard it's one of the farthest out psychedelics you can take. It lasts for days and days. Now, I've never heard of STP. I wonder if she's got PCP. She's, she actually meant PCP. She just doesn't know the name of it. And that's on that list of scary hallucinogens that I've got an article about. Well, at the ranch, we were all pretty much in our own world, but Tex really got into his own world. Now she's not talking about the murders anymore, so I'll, I'll finish reading it here. She's just talking about Tex. 